Hey everybody, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Avengers Infinity War to see how accurate all the science and technology scenes in this movie really are. Where'd that come from? It's nanotech, you like it? I definitely like the nanotech. It is really, really cool. Nano means 10 to the negative ninth, which is really, really small. Like, that's like comparing the size of a marble to the size of the Earth. As objects get really big or really small, the laws of physics governing them actually slightly change. Strength of material, melting points, even the color will actually change depending on what kind of scale you're working with, like nano, regular, or like astronomical. When objects get smaller, their surface area to volume ratio really increases. And why that's important is because the more area you have, there's more room for contact with other materials for more chemical reactions to occur. Not only more room, the reactions will actually occur faster. So when we see Tony like rapidly creating and destroying these new like technologies with the nanoparticles, it will happen that quickly. One of the signs a chemical reaction has taken place is a color change. What we see here is that the Iron Man suit is primarily red, but the sword that Tony Stark's make is gold. And funny enough, if you look at gold with the naked eye, it has the iconic shine to it, but when you break gold down into its nanoparticles, it actually appears red, or sometimes purple. One thing to note here is that mass is not changing. Like, no matter where the particles move, the overall mass of his suit will not be affected. I mean, the distribution of mass will definitely change. Like, if you have, like, a shield in one place, or if you're doing, like, the booster rockets, then most of the mass is at your feet instead of, like, to the torso. This is outlined very well in the movie, because as the number of nanoparticles Tony Stark has access to decreases, parts of his suit are vanishing as well. Solid nanomaterials will actually behave like liquids if you group them all together, and you can easily see this on the beach. Like, if you go and you just fill a bucket full of sand, and you're pouring the sand out, the way the sand is pouring out of the bucket is the same way that water would pour out of that same bucket. Now imagine taking that sand and making Excalibur with it. <laughs> that's, that's basically what he's doing right now. The big question is, can he make the diversity of objects from the nanoparticles that he does in the movie? Like a sword, a shield, booster rockets, like stronger guns, and as far as I understand, no. You cannot do that. The nanotechnology today serves one purpose only as it was programmed for initially. What I mean by that is the nanoparticles that you use in scanning electron microscopes cannot be the same ones that you use to clean up oil spills in the ocean. Whatever Elon Musk feels like making an Iron Man suit and turning it into a nanoparticle like masterpiece, he'll do it whenever he feels like it, but as of right now, each nanoparticle or group of nanoparticles that you program can only be used to serve one purpose. One of the bigger issues with the nanotechnology as being used by Iron Man or Tony Stark is breathing. Like, you, as silly as it sounds, you don't want to breathe in these nanoparticles. And because they're so small, and especially like it, here, like Tony is constantly changing shapes of the Iron Man suit to whatever he needed to be. But the more you make like alternate shapes, the more the nanoparticles are moving, the higher the chances you have of breathing those particles in. And again, the arc reactor was killing him and he found a way to get around that, so I'm sure there are ways of going around the nanoparticles, like entering your body. One of the criticisms that I do have here is how the nanoparticles are housed. You can't keep them all in like one block on your chest, because they're not being created as they disperse around his body to make the Iron Man suit. They're all already in one place. So that one spot is going to be very, very heavy. I don't think he can just walk around with it like as casually as he is right now. It would make far more sense for Tony to like put like a backpack or some sort of vest on him because this is not possible. There's no way that you can have all those nanoparticles and have all that mass held in one place and then just be casual about it. Oh. The structure is polymorphic. Polymorphic is just a really fancy word. I mean, you can easily break it down to little ones. Like poly means many, and then morphic is, comes from morph, which means to change. So polymorphic means many changes or various alterations. People are polymorphic. Like we have like dark hair, light hair, tall, short. We come from all different parts of the world, but we're all still people. 
polymorphic as it pertains to computer programming works like this. It just means that you have multiple variables and you can use them in various places in various parts of your code. Let's set a variable y is equal to x plus 5. So as x changes, y changes. Now you have another variable z. So z is going to be activated when y has a value of 10 or above. Okay, so as x goes from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then y is going to be 5 plus x. So when x is equal to 5, y becomes 10. Now the variable z, it becomes activated in your code for whatever purpose it serves. In that example, variables x, y, and z are considered polymorphic. It's 8 degrees off its axis. Gravitational pull is all over the place. Yeah, we got one advantage. He's coming to us. This is something that I'm glad Marvel has pointed out. Different planetary bodies will have different forces of gravity acting upon them. Or rather, different gravitational pulls that act upon whoever's on that planet. <laughs> when I was first watching the scene, I was like, oh my gosh, they're actually using like Titan as it is, like one of Saturn's really moons. And then I was like, wait, but I thought Saturn, you, you, like this is not the same uh, Titan that's orbiting Saturn. That one is, I, like, it's extremely, extremely cold. And not just because it's so far from the sun, but also because it's just nitrogen. And if you've ever seen liquid nitrogen, it is very, very, very cold. Even with the Iron Man suit, like, Peter would die pretty quickly. Tony would survive for maybe a few more seconds. But, yeah, like, the, the atmosphere there is just so cold. Like, it's well below zero. There's no way that any of these guys would even survive it. You know when we're close. Yeah. If it lives, Forge harnesses the blazing power of the neutron star. Yeah, um, there's a, that neutron star would, like, easily kill everybody in, in a very short amount of time if that was ever actually active. Neutron stars form when a larger star collapses on itself in a supernova. So when a star collapses, the gravity of that star will actually be, like, compressing all the mass inside of a very, very small volume, and that's what increases the density so much. If the gravity is strong enough to the point where it compresses like all the way down to like a very, very tiny area, that neutron star will become a black hole. When a neutron star is initially formed, it's really, really hot. Like billion or trillions of Kelvin, I don't know the exact number, but it's extremely hot. To kind of benefit like Thor and Theotry the Dwarf here, neutron stars, like when they hit like a peak heat level, they'll actually cool down very, very quickly because there's nothing else around them that can influence their temperature except for themselves. Like there's no other form of heat to like bring them up anymore. So they really cool down rapidly and I believe the only way for you to actually harness that energy, I mean, this is, we're just speculating here, right? But the only way for you to harness that energy is if the neutron star has been like a couple hundred thousand, maybe a million years old, because by that point, it'll be cold enough so that you're not going to instantly just get fried the moment you're right next to it. Unfortunately for Thor, you cannot reheat a neutron star because there's no fuel. Like, there, there's nothing... Like, like, you can, like, make a spark, but you, there's nothing to actually, like, fuel the reformation of a star. That's not how that works. The neutron star shown here is probably towards the end of its life, and if you contain it, like they showed here, like, I don't know what that sphere is, but if they, you can contain a star somehow, some way, then it'll be, like, s cooling down much slower, so it'll maintain its heat longer. Now, I don't know how those rings are actually, like, projecting all the heat energy from the star in one direction, but if you could d do that, I would be surprised that it would just, like, blast through. Like, I, I don't know what resistance is actually hitting to heat anything up. Like, the heat energy from a neutron star, it'll, it'll easily just... I, I don't think there's anything in the universe that can actually withstand a level of heat. And that does it for Infinity War. I'm sure I missed a lot of stuff that you guys probably wanted me to discuss in this movie, but there's so much going on. Just throw it in the comments if I missed anything, and I'll get to it as quickly as I can. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I loved watching this movie. It's my favorite Avengers or Marvel movie they've made so far. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.